Alright, so about a week ago over on Twitter and on YouTube posts, I asked y'all send me some questions because I wanted to record a Q&A video. That's this video right here. And just because I want more of y'all to follow me on Twitter and I guess Instagram too, although I'm not very good at posting things on Instagram, I'm going to be answering the people from Twitter first. They have priority simply because I want y'all to follow me over there. Question number one over here on Twitter, which are the most productive hours in your day? And this is asked by Vesilios. If you were to ask me this even just a year ago when I was finishing up college, so basically all of my college years, it was, it was nighttime. I was much of a night owl, and that would probably be anywhere between 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. That's when I would get most of my work done. Nowadays, where I actually have to wake up early, so not too many uh, 2 a.m. work sessions get done, few times that's when you see the real deep bags under my eyes but uh I normally find myself being real productive right when I get to work up until I eat lunch so I'll get to work between 8 30 and 9 o'clock and then I will eat lunch maybe sometime around 12 30 and then after lunch I have, feel like I just have to have my stomach set a little bit and I just kind of do some of those more mundane tasks before I get back into work now I do record and edit all my videos generally sometimes on the weekend but generally late at night like right now it is 8 p.m. I guess that's not that late but sometimes I'll work from 8 p.m. to 1 a.m. maybe even 2 a.m. sometimes so I still have that night owl work time in many instances but that's not every single day like it used to be how do you motivate yourself to work even when you really don't want to well I have a particular system well I, like, I don't like to search for motivation. I like to s essentially be disciplined. So if I don't want to do something, but I need to do something, especially this year when I'm trying to make sure I better myself, I do it. So instead of looking for motivation, be disciplined. Because there are going to be many days, especially if you work 8, 9, 10 hours a day, you come home, do you really want to go to the gym? Do you really want to code after you just coded all day? Do you really want to do whatever you need to do? Maybe not, but you need to make sure that's a priority and you do it. You know, many people say it's good to just go to the gym or, or work on something for just a little bit because you uh, stay in the habit of doing it every other day or every day or once a week, what have you. So once you build that habit, it's a little bit easier to do it. And instead of looking for motivation, just look for discipline. Here's the thing. If you really want to do something, you'll find a way to do it. If you don't, you'll find an excuse. However, just to piggyback on that, there are particular times where I will get inspiration. I will be, I'm not necessarily tr looking for motivation, but if I know I have a video that I want to make, and then I'm watching somebody on YouTube make their video, I'm like, they're making their videos, they're doing their thing. Why am I just sitting here watching their stuff? Why don't I go and work on what I need to do? Like right now, I appreciate you watching the video, but is there something else that you need to be doing? then you should probably do that right after you finish this video and gives, give it a thumbs up. So uh, just do what you need to do. The next question is, do you like dogs? And although it is spelled D-A-W-G-S, I'm gonna assume you mean dogs, like puppy dogs. I love dogs. I have a dog right now. She's been hiding, like kind of sneak peek in some of these videos every now and then. But then, y'all will see in tomorrow's video, it should be tomorrow, we're actually getting a new puppy. When I say we, Molly and I, and we're getting a new puppy, and I'll talk a bit more about that puppy, but uh, that's like just like three or four weeks away. Pretty stoked on that, so love dogs. Sally asks, what's your favorite programming language to use? And I, I just feel like it depends on what I'm doing. Sometimes I, I mean, all, all in all, I really like Java. I think the main reason is that is the first programming language I learned, and I learned it from a very good teacher. So I think that was a huge driving factor into why I really like that language today. Plus, I use it many days at work. It's kind of the main back-end language that we're using at work. But then, uh, yeah, we'll go with that. Java. I do really like Swift. It's a new language, iOS applications, that's pretty cool too, but it's very niche. Rodrigo asks, favorite coffee brands? Well, I'll be able to answer that soon. 
just just not yet. <laughs> oh, and before we go any further, I forgot to mention, I am going to be essentially having a table of contents for this video. Everything is going to be timestamped in the pinned comment down below. So if you want to skip around some of the questions, you can check that out down there. Labyrinth asks, is computer science a dying degree or what? Because I want to enroll to it, but everyone is disagreeing with me. And is there a difference in the work industry between CS degree and software engineer degree? So to start off, I mean, I haven't seen it be a dying degree. People, I think it's a rising degree. I mean, people can argue about, well, if I just want to do software development, maybe I can go to a boot camp instead of do four years of computer science. Maybe that's the case for you. Or maybe you can just learn online. But that that's not necessarily the question. Computer science degree will definitely get your foot in the door. It'll definitely teach you a lot, at least it did for me. And I would not have the job I have right now if it wasn't my for my computer science degree because I've the the doors that this computer science degree opened in terms of internships and, and everything like that, I wouldn't have, it just wouldn't have worked out the way it did. Maybe it would have worked out in a different manner that I was equally happy with, but I'll never know because that life doesn't exist. But in terms of everyone disagreeing with you, if this is something you want to do, then go do it. If you're still iffy about it, what I recommend is checking, going on all my GitHub and checking out the open source computer science degree and taking the intro to computer science course there. Or there's another one that I have been meaning to add to the GitHub uh, open source, open source computer science degree. And that is the Harvard CS50 intro to computer science. Go through that. A lot of people say they really like it. And if you like that and like the idea of computer science and pursue it, go ahead and move forward. This is your life not theirs. I understand it's kind of hard because you want to please other people, but if you're not pleased yourself, you're not going to be able to please other people. And is there a difference in the work industry between a computer science degree and software engineering degree? Uh, I, there are a few other areas in which you can get a computer science degree. I personally work as a software engineer, so in that regard, for me, it wouldn't have been, I don't, I don't think. Maybe you'll learn more about software engineering in that software engineering degree since it's more focused, but that's where I leave it. Are you taking on side jobs as of right now? Um, in terms of development work, no. The only deals I got going on is my full-time software engineering job. I have YouTube, and that's a whole business in and of itself. You all see some of the sponsorships and whatnot. And I'm also working on starting up a business. So in terms of side development work, no, I don't have time. And that new puppy, that's going to take up some of my time too. Alright, so now I'm currently going over to my community post where I asked you all the same thing, like ask me some questions so I can answer it in this video. We're going to start at the top. The comment with the most likes, go figure, is as a 15 year old starting in programming, how can I grow a beard like yours? Just let it grow. 15 years old, I can't grow a beard like me. I'm still trying to get mine a little bit thicker, but you know, it just it's genetics essentially. So, uh... Don't listen to the whole shaving it more often will make it grow thicker. It'll just make it coarser, which may make it feel thicker. So I mean, maybe you could shave it once, but just let it just let it grow. Make sure you edge up up here. Sometimes I don't, but also always make sure you edge up down here because me, I'm a hairy fella. It connects to my daggum chest and that doesn't look too good. Question number two. I really love how these questions aren't necessarily about programming because I love answering the programming questions but I love answering the personal questions and it's how did you and your wife meet? So my wife and I met seven years ago. I was 17, she was 20. She, yes, she's three years older than me and it was this was at a car wash. So she was working at a car wash raising money for a mutual friend of ours who had gotten in a bad uh, skateboarding accident, really hurt his head, was in the hospital and they were trying to raise money for him. And I went there to get my car wash and donate the money to the cause. That's where we met. Started hanging out that summer. Dated for the next almost five years. I proposed. We got married. And here we are today. Fastest way to get a programming internship as in what is bare minimum knowledge desired? How many classes taken in college before internship ready and which ones please? Well, if you are in college, I would highly recommend asking these same exact questions to your advisor. That is kind of their job to make sure that you know all of this information in terms of internships and jobs, how many classes, and you can also get college credits for those internships. Now, it's kind of crazy because the college doesn't really do much for you, but you still pay them the money but you're paying them for the credits. Uh, that's, a, that's another rant for another day, but don't necessarily look at bare minimum knowledge desired. Just start applying to places, try to cater your resume to their job listing, being honest, just like I said earlier in this video, 
and just roll with that. The math classes in university are really hard for me. I do very well in my computer science classes. However, how do you do in your math related courses in college and did that affect your overall competence in computer science? So when I started off in college, I did start taking calculus and although I took cal calculus in high school, I had a rude awakening in college because in high school, I got everything done in class. I had no homework. I never had to study and I would still pass, get good grades. When it came to college, I didn't get very good. Uh, I, I didn't realize that I actually had to study. It wasn't until like that after that first semester, I'm like, I should probably start studying for school instead of just thinking like it's as easy as high school. So I did struggle with math initially, but I had to make sure that I kind of took a step back, reanalyzed, and was like, okay, I need to I need to actually focus and actually get the work done that I need to get done and study hard because this is this is real life. This isn't just high school. At least it's closer to real life than high school. But if you do poorly in your math classes, I will believe that that will negatively affect your computer science classes because a lot of your computer science cl classes are simply taking things you learned in linear algebra, for example, or discrete math and implementing them with code. So if you don't understand the math concepts, how are you supposed to implement those with code in many of those other courses? So definitely try your best <laughs> in your math classes and that'll really help you out in your computer science classes. How to be procrastination. I'm looking to learn how to code and hopefully land myself a job in the field. My only obstacle is my laziness. So how do you be procrastination? I, I don't really know because I'm really bad procrastinator in many aspects of life. Just make sure you take in discipline into account. If you want to get something done, then you'll find a way to get it done. If you don't, then you'll find an excuse. Did I already say that in this video? Sorry. I recorded like 20 answering 20 other questions at least but my camera didn't turn off but like the recording ended so I don't if I repeat myself I'm sorry I just don't even know what's recorded how does a person start developing software and games and such with no graphic assets and if there's a good place to get some for free well I think that's a good place to start is getting graphic uh, graphics for free from somewhere but if you were genuinely interested in developing games check out a uh, game development engines. What are they called? Game engines? One is Unreal Engine that is created by Epic Games, which if you didn't know, they also created Fortnite. So I guess a decent uh, game engine. But also if you're interested in game development, then you've probably heard of Unity. Check out some of those and look up tutorials on YouTube because that's kind of their job to kind of guide you through this, the whole graphical aspect of it, because I personally haven't created many games or any at all. So not the best person to ask. Hi, would learning C++ and JavaScript in 2019 be a good idea? Love your vid vids and ideas, by the way. Appreciate that. Uh, JavaScript, yes, JavaScript is very popular. I feel like it's only getting more and more popular. So definitely. And C++, yes, as well. I mean, even if you don't directly use C++, although it is used in many areas of this industry, learning C++ will allow you to learn Java or allow you to learn C Sharp or even Swift or Kotlin. Learning one of those staple languages like C++ or Java will make things a lot easier when you go to try to learn another language. What skill do you think helped land you that first job the most? So in terms of the first job that if we're talking about the computer science aspect of things, that would be my NASA internship. And that is like the only job I ever applied to that I included a cover letter on. So that may have helped uh, me get the foot in the door. I did a little phone interview, I think. And then I did an in-person interview. I made sure that I matched up my resume to their job listing. Of course, I was honest throughout the whole process, but I could do everything that they needed. So I was a great a candidate for the job, so that helps as well. And when I was in there for the interview, it was a very laid back interview. I like to believe that I'm very personable and have good social skills, so that definitely helped as well. And the fact that I mentioned growing up all my life, I worked on a farm. The work that needed to be done at this job was a lot of data center rewiring and heavy lifting and just moving servers and things like that. They knew that someone coming from my particular background will do any job that they throw at me, so I think that helped as well. What is your biggest drive to do software development? Do you have any inspirations or people you look up to? In terms of software development, I don't really have any inspiration, like people I look up to. But today, knowing that I've spent the last five years working hard to get to where I am, it drives me to continue to progress, otherwise the past five years would kind of be not necessarily a waste, but 
kind of a waste. Is it best to apply to your dream job first or try to work at other places to build your resume and then apply? Yes. Apply to your dream job. Make sure if you don't already, you have the skills that will satisfy the requirements of your dream job and also apply to other places that can help pad your resume. Because the worst that could happen is you apply to your dream job, you don't get the dream job, and then you go back to doing what you initially kind of suggested in this comment, and that is work at other places to pad your resume and then go to your dream job. It's not like if you apply to your dream job, unless you do something really crazy that you probably shouldn't ever do, they're not gonna remember like, oh, this person applied here three years ago and we didn't want them then, we don't want them now. That's not gonna happen. They're not gonna remember that you applied and that they denied you three years prior, so it won't hurt for you to apply there. And in turn, the best thing that could happen is that instead of getting the jobs at the padding your resume type places, you get your dream job straight off the get. But also something else you may realize is that, say you get called into two or three different interviews. Dream job, two other jobs. And you go to all of them and you realize like, atmosphere, the culture, the people at your dream job are just kind of like, eh, okay. But you go to these other interviews and you're like, I really like this. Like this seems more fun. This atmosphere is a lot better. These people are great. I would love to work with them every day. You won't know unless you actually try for both. So just because something seems like your dream job, it may not be. It may be, but it may not be. Hablas Espanol, the cliche thing to say would be like, un poquito. But uh, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I, I do speak a little bit. Uh, I'm not gonna try to right now, of course, cause that's whatever. But in school, middle school, high school, three years of Spanish. When I was growing up working on those farms, I worked with a lot of Spanish speaking folks. So I learned Spanish working with them. And I've been to Costa Rica a few times where I would try my best to assimilate to their culture and their language and I just, I can hold a conversation, I can understand it more than I can speak it, I can hold a decent conversation, especially if I'm just uh, asking for coffee or something, but yeah, a little bit. How long have you been working and how this affects your life? Uh, well, if we want to get down to the nitty gritty, I've been working odd fun jobs since I was 12 years old. I would always be begging my parents to let me do something because I always like to earn some money. A lot of times, so I could just save it for something big or just save it or let's get real to buy some video games. But a reference to working like full time, right out of high school I got a full time job because I wasn't planning on going to college. I worked there for a solid year and a half before I actually decided to go to college. And then I had odd jobs in there, internships and things of that nature, co-ops every other semester. And then when I graduated last May, I got a job like a couple weeks after I graduated, last May was crazy if you didn't already know. I graduated one weekend, I got married the next weekend, went on the honeymoon, and then two days after I got back from the honeymoon, still in May, the month of May, I started my job. So this May will mark one year as a full-time software engineer. What are your hobbies outside of programming? Well, hunting, fishing, surfing, snowboarding, making videos, throwing hatchets. I do a little bit of woodworking. I normally just do woodworking when I need to build something. Like I built our coffee table, I built our table, I restored, I, I essentially refinished some of our other furniture in our house. I built that tabletop back there so I didn't have to buy one. And you can see some of these uh, new tools I got going on. I don't have a, a, a tool chest, a toolbox just yet, so that's why they're kind of sitting there. Plus, to be honest with you, uh, main reason I have them like on display right there. It's not to have a cool cool background to a video It's simply because I want to make sure I know everything I have in terms of tools in my head So when I do put them in my toolbox, I will know what tools I actually have so I don't spend Too long looking for a tool that I don't have or I don't go buy something that I already have So that's not really what you asked but figured I'd mention that as well And I like doing a lot of other things, but I feel like it's all within the realm of that all everything I just mentioned do you have any woodworking skills? I answered that, kinda. Do you brush twice a day? Yes. When you drink as much coffee as this guy, you gotta make sure you brush your teeth or else you're gonna have some funky looking George Washington wooden type teeth. What are your go-to TV shows? This changes all the time, just simply because we, uh, Molly and I will binge watch whatever we we want. Right now, one show that we try to tune into every Friday night, if not, we just catch it the next day or two over the weekend, is The Blacklist. I love 
crime shows like that where like if you've ever seen White Collar. Basically I love crime shows where one of the main characters in helping solve the crimes is a criminal. One of the best criminals at that. And Blacklist and White Collar, which unfortunately was taken off of Netflix at the end of last year. Those two I really, really like. But there are also so many other shows that I could just list that I just I may not watch now, but I've watched in the past three years, you know, so it just all depends on how I'm feeling. I'm a senior in college, but only took my first programming class this semester. Is it ever too late to learn how to code? Do you think I could teach myself how to code in the next couple of years so that I'm on par with students who major in computer science in college? So to touch on the first part, is it ever too late to learn how to code? I mean, you, it sounds like you're senior in college, so does that mean you're 22 years old? If that's the case, of course not. If you were 32 years old, 42 years old, maybe even 52 years old, I would still say no. I mean, take it with a grain of salt. I'm only 24 years old. I don't know what it's like to be 35 or 45 or 55. But my personal belief is that if you're 35 years old and you live to the average human life, what is that, like 70 years old? You're only halfway there. What are you going to do for the other half of your life? Are you going to be doing whatever you're doing now? Are you going to regret not learning how to program? Like why, like if you want to learn something new, just do it. I understand it's difficult, but if it's genuinely something you want to do, make it your hobby, learn as much as you can, and then take it from there. But if you want to learn how to do something, I don't think you're ever too late. There are people who learn how to do new things when they're 60 years old. There are people getting college degrees when they're 60, 70, 80 years old. So for you to learn how to code, it's really just whatever you want to do. And as for the second half of your question, uh, yeah, I think you can take the next couple of years and be well surpassed many of your colleagues who graduated with a computer science degree simply because there are a lot of students that I know who graduated alongside me who really had no clue how to program. Like, they just weren't very good. Maybe they knew a good amount of theory, maybe they understood the methodology, but when it came to actually sitting down and writing programs, they weren't very smart. I'm not saying I was the best ever, but if you took a couple years to learn how to code, you will definitely be on par, if not exceeding, a lot of people who graduate out of a computer science program. It's about time to wrap up this video. I am scrolling down through these comments because I want to answer one more before the end of the video. If I didn't get around to your question, I'm sorry. I wish I could have gotten to all of them, but I felt like I already made this video way longer than it ever should have been, or I even planned for it to be, but I liked answering the questions and I got a little bit carried away. If you asked a question that I did not answer and you really want me to answer that question, leave it down under this video, especially if you're watching this within the first 24 to 48 hours, because that's when I try to be like the most active in the comment section. And that, and that goes for all videos, not just this video. If you ever have a question, just go to my most recent video. If I just uploaded a video, comment down below. I appreciate all the comments, even if it's not a question, if it's just a, what's up? or thanks for the video or whatever. I appreciate that and I appreciate everyone who likes the videos because comments and likes show activity under a video and the YouTube algorithm actually picks up on that and helps share this video to more and more people. And to finish off this video with a, uh, a good question, Rashi asked, how are you? Are you happy? I am good and yes, I am.